Hey guys, so what I've got for you today are the organ system notes. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to go through them pretty quickly. Uh, remember that you can go to the How the Body Works website. Uh, if you just do a Google search for Kids Health, How the Body Works, you'll be able to find all of the videos that we watch that correspond to these organ systems. Uh, you can even watch some of the videos that we didn't get to watch that we didn't have time for. Uh, so some of these systems have videos that go with them, uh, but we just didn't watch them in class. So that would be a good idea to review as well. So let's go ahead and get started. To start off with, uh, we have the levels of organization. And so here we start off with a cell. Uh, so uh, a cell is the smallest unit of, of anything that's living. Uh, remember the cell theory. Uh, that we have notes on that as well. If I have a bunch of the same type of cell, that makes a tissue. Uh, so we've got different kinds of tissues, like the epidermis and the dermis are two different layers of your skin, and those are two different tissues. If I take several different tissues and put them together, that makes an organ. In this case, it's a kidney. And then if I take several organs together, uh, like the kidneys plus the bladder and the urethras and the uh, and uh, sorry the urethra and the ureters, uh, that's going to make a whole a whole organ system, which is the urinary system, which is part of the excretory. Uh, and then if I take a bunch of organ systems like the urinary plus the digestive and the respiratory and the circulatory and everything else, all of that is going to make an entire organism. Let's begin with the skeletal system. So this is going to be for protection and support protection, of course, because your skull protects your brain and also um, your rib cage protects your heart and your lungs. It's also going to be what gives you your shape or holds you up. So that's why we say support. Um, it's made of bones and cartilage. And on the next slide, you have a bunch of examples of bones. Feel free to hit pause here if you need to copy them. Here you'll see what the basic uh, stuff is about the, the skeletal system. So it talks a little bit about protection, um, which I already mentioned. It's also gonna store things like fat, calcium, and minerals, and your bone marrow produces your red and your white blood cells. So that's where they come from. That's where they're made. Uh, we talked about shape and support, and then movement, of course, because your uh, skeletal muscles are attached to these bones and move these bones, and that's how you're able to write your notes or walk to your next class. The integumentary system is uh, for protection also. It's going to protect you from injury, like if you bump into something, your skin is going to get injured and not any vital organs. Uh, it's also going to protect you from infection if your friend sneezes on you or you're exposed to some sort of bacteria. It'll protect you from that. Um, so it's made up of your skin, your hair, and your nails. Uh, you've got sweat glands that are also going to help you get rid of waste um, in terms of like salt. Um, and uh, it's also going to help cool your body down. So your hair actually helps keep you warm while the evaporation of sweat uh, keeps you cool. The nervous system is transmitting messages. But the important thing to know here is that it is tra it's transferring these electrical messages from your brain to different parts of your body and then from different parts of your body to your brain. So here is your brain. Um, this is basically what we did on the brain cap and this, these are the different parts of your brain and what they are responsible for. So the brain is the control center um, and the spinal cord is kind of like main street where all of these messages go through and that's called the central nervous system so it's made up of the brain and the spinal cord and then the peripheral nervous system is everything else all the nerves outside of the brain and the spinal cord so the word peripheral means on the side so beside the the brain and the spinal cord and all of these um, parts are made up of nerves uh, and then the cells are called neurons and the these are the actual things that are taking those electrical messages uh, throughout your body the circulatory system is basically like a highway system where a lot of things are getting transported through here and your heart is what's powering the blood that's pumping through your veins and your arteries. So remember that your blood is basically all red, but in diagrams like this, we color it blue and red to show what is oxygenated, in, in other words, carrying oxygen, and what is not carrying oxygenated uh, oxygen or deoxygenated blood. Uh, so uh, this, the, your blood 
will transport this oxygen from your lungs to all the different parts of your body. And then it's going to bring back carbon dioxide, bring it back to your lungs so that you can get rid of it. Uh, so it's all just about transporting things. And then other things that are going to get transported here are going to be like nutrients, also hormones from the, um, the endocrine system. And so your heart and your whole circulatory system act like a transportation network for a lot of things that need to go different places in your body. So here's the heart. The blue side is showing deoxygenated blood and the red side is showing oxygenated blood. So when it's on the blue side, it's going to pump and send the blood to the lungs. It's going to pick up oxygen at the lungs and then it's going to come back to the red side and then get pumped again and get delivered wherever it needs to go. If it needs to go to your pinky finger or your brain or your leg or anywhere else. So the veins carry deoxygenated blood uh, to the heart and lungs to pick it up, to pick up the oxygen. The arteries go away from the heart and lungs because they're already carrying oxygen, so they're going to go deliver it. And the heart is a muscle that's a cardiac muscle, and that's what's pumping everything. That's what's giving it the power to be able to travel. Um, and then the capillaries are the teeny tiny little veins and arteries that you have, their, their blood vessels, and that's those are the ones that actually do like the trading. They're the ones that drop off the oxygen and pick up any waste. Uh, so those are the capillaries. That's kind of like the end of the road where stuff gets dropped off or picked up. The respiratory system is all about breathing and exchanging gases. So when you breathe in, you take in lots of different kinds of gases, including some nitrogen and, and things like that. But what you really need is oxygen. So your your lungs are going to take that oxygen and then get, basically give it to your blood uh, and uh, let the blood transport it. And then they're going to be taking the carbon dioxide from your blood as waste and then you're going to exhale it. So here are the different parts. You have your trachea. Uh, and then that leads to your lungs and the diaphragm underneath is the muscle that makes your lungs inflate or suck in air. The next picture is a little bit better. So your trachea leads to the bronchus or if you, since you have two of them, it's called the bronchi. So those are the two branches that go to each of the lungs. Then those branch off into the bronchioles and then those branch off even more into the alveoli. And the alveoli is the one that does the trading. It picks up the, the carbon dioxide from the blood and it gives the blood the oxygen to transport. So here are here's a breakdown of the different parts uh, that I just talked about. Um, so if you need to push pause on this, you can pause this and, and copy it. The muscular system is all about movement and you've got three different types of muscles. You've got skeletal muscles that are attached to your bones that move your bones. You've got cardiac muscles in your heart that make your heart pump. And you've got smooth muscles in your digestive system, also in your bladder. Um, and, and those are kind of, you know, what push your food through or um, what helps you hold in your urine so that you don't have an accident. Uh, and so those are called involuntary muscles. The, the cardiac and the smooth muscles are involuntary because you don't have to think about it. Um, and then the skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles because you think about it and you tell those muscles to move. Here are a few of the muscles that you have in your body. Remember, everybody has the same muscles. It's just some people's muscles are bigger than others. The digestive system uh, breaks down food into nutrients. And so we've got lots of different parts that are going to do different things. Here is your picture to label. And I'm going to use the next slide so that you can so that I can explain it. So everything starts out with the mouth where teeth break down the food and that's a physical change. And then the enzymes in your saliva start the uh, chemical change. The food's going to go down your esophagus and then into your stomach. And that's where the majority of the breakdown is going to happen. And there's a lot of organs that are going to be adding stuff to the stomach and to the very uh, beginning part of the a small intestine which is called a duodenum and they're going to help digest the food so that's going to be liver is going to be adding bile that digests fat uh, your gallbladder is actually what stores the bile uh, your pancreas is going to be adding insulin 
to help digest all of that stuff. And then it's gonna, once it's digested, it's gonna go into the small intestine and that's where all of the nutrients gets, get absorbed. So by the time it gets to the large intestine, it's basically just waste and water. The water gets absorbed uh, mostly in the large intestine and then it goes to the rectum um, until it basically fills the rectum and you get the urge to go and then it gets expelled through your anus. The excretory system is kind of made of a bunch of different systems, but I wanted to focus on the urinary system because we haven't talked about it uh, too much. Uh, so the urinary system is your kidneys um, and your ureters and your bladder and your urethra. And so here, um, this the, your kidneys are in charge of taking waste out of your blood, sending it to your bladder, and that's urine that's, uh, that comes from your blood. Uh, excretory systems are all systems that get rid of waste. So you could consider it your digestive also is getting rid of waste. Your integumentary is getting rid of salt. So that's considered waste too. Um, your respiratory is getting rid of carbon dioxide. So that's also waste. So all of those are uh, considered excretory. Here is the urinary system so you can label it. And then the reproductive system. So we've pretty much already covered all of this because we talked about sexual and asexual reproduction. Uh, the only thing I wanted to mention was that uh, the testes produce the sperm and the ovaries produce the eggs. Um, they are also going to um, produce hormones, which are part of the endocrine system. So I'm going to move on to that one. The endocrine system is all about glands and hormones, and you'll notice that the ovaries are in this one too, because this is a picture of a girl. Um, so I'm going to start towards the top. I'm not going to talk about all of these, um, but I will talk about uh, most of them. So um, first of all, uh, hormones are chemical messages. The endocrine system is a lot like the nervous system because it's all about sending messages throughout your body, but uh, it doesn't have its own highway system like the nervous system does. So it's gonna send these chemicals through the circulatory system. The uh, pituitary gland, which is in your brain, is actually the boss gland, even though it's teeny tiny, it's about the size of a pea. It um, releases hormones that control all of the other glands. So these the hormones are the, these chemical messages. Your thyroid is in charge of your metabolism, which is basically how you burn the food you eat to make it into energy. Your adrenal glands will release a hormone called adrenaline. Uh, and so you might have heard of somebody having an adrenaline rush uh, during a dangerous situation. And there's stories where, you know, women can save their babies who are stuck under a car and they have superhuman strength and they can lift up the car. And that's all because of adrenaline. Um, also, you might have heard of stories of people getting hurt and they um, don't feel any pain until a few hours later, like, until they were able to get to safety. And that's all because of adrenaline. So it's going to help in survival situations. Your pancreas produces a uh, hormone called insulin, which helps you digest sugars and uh, basically all sugars like carbohydrates and things. And people who are diabetic have problems with their pancreas and have problems uh, producing insulin. The ovaries and the testes uh, are going to produce estrogen and testosterone. Uh, so estrogen is um, produced by the ovaries in females and testosterone is produced by the testes in males. And this is where uh, we always hear people saying like, oh, those teenagers going through puberty are so hormonal. And it's because this is what causes puberty. This is what's going to cause people to start getting acne, for guys' voices to change, for women to start getting their menstrual cycle and things like that. That's all going to be caused by these uh, hormones that are being released by the ovaries or the testes. And finally, this is not in your notes, but I wanted to talk a little bit about it. Your immune system uh, protects against diseases and viruses, bacteria, all of that stuff. Uh, there's a really good video on the How the Body Works a website so you can watch that um, if you notice I have the links all at the bottom so that you can go and find them yourself um, and so it's really important to understand the difference between a, a bacterial infection and a virus antibiotics are not going to work on viruses so for colds and the flu that's a virus 
your doctor's not going to give you antibiotics for that. But they might give you antibiotics if you have something like strep throat, which is a bacterial infection. And it's really important to not take antibiotics unless you really, really need them because uh, the bacteria can build up a resistance in your body and after a while, antibiotics won't work anymore. And, and so that's not good. It's also important to vaccinate. Um, we talked when we did the... Uh, the scientific method way at the beginning of the year, we talked about um, peer reviewed uh, scientific studies and a scientist that released a study that said vaccines were bad, which is not true. So it's really important to uh, get your vaccines when you're supposed to, because right now people are not doing that and, and diseases that weren't a problem for us anymore are coming back like measles and polio and things. Uh, so it's always really, really important to uh, vaccinate. So uh, just to review really quick, this is uh, something that you need to know that's really important. Remember, cells make tissues. Uh, tissues make organs. And organs make organ systems. And organ systems make organisms. Okay, that's just a little bit of a review for you. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for visiting Slomo's YouTube channel. Look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. And don't forget to like and subscribe.